permit me to stay on the protocols already established by the finance minister designate. Like the finance minister, I want to extend profound thanks and appreciation to the president of Liberia for my preferment and want to assure him and this August body as well as all of our people of my utmost in ensuring that legitimate revenues are collected and that we have efficiency in those revenue collections to ensure that our people get the best value for our public resources. Thank you also, Senators, for this opportunity for me to present my strategic vision in leading the Revenue Authority, which essentially is going to focus on three major prompts. Institutional strengthening, revenue expansion, and governance improvement. On the institutional strengthening piece, you will agree with me that the foundation of an effective revenue authority lies in robust institutional structure. I will be proposing a revision to the framework that we currently have so that we can have transformation in elevating the authority to grant it a full autonomy status. This, in my belief, will be able to solve a lot of the operational and discipline problems that exist with the current SEMA autonomous structure that the authority currently has. You will also all recall that when a decision was made a couple of years ago to detach the Department of Budget from the Ministry of Finance, I'm sorry, the Department of Revenue from the Ministry of Finance and create the Library of Revenue Authority. The thinking at the time was that this would be a five-year experiment. And the hope was that once we got it right, to eventually graduate the authority to a full autonomy status. Even though there has been marked improvement, and this is not to say there have not been challenges, but the uh, granting the authority, the full autonomy, is still an action that is overdue and outstanding. This full autonomy will empower the authority to make strategic decisions swiftly, allocate resources more effectively, and be accountable for delivering results. We will also work at building, restoring the merit-based system, which is paramount to ensure that promotions, appointments, etc., are based on competence and performance, thereby fostering a culture of excellence and integrity. On the revenue expansion prompt, we know that revenue generation is the basis for our nation's fiscal health. And as you heard the president in his annual message to the nation, and also as you just heard from the finance minister, most of these services that each of them have committed to supporting for our people rely heavily, if not entirely, on our revenue capa uh, generating capacity. In so doing, there are certain key aspects that we want to focus on in our revenue generation framework. The first one is we need to look at our exemption regime you know, and see whether there are efficiencies that we could deploy. And for that, we will work with the Ministry of Finance, yourselves and the uh, Presidency, as well as the National Investment Commission, the Ministry of Commerce and other actors to ensure that we can be able to optimize you know, and see the relevance of some of those incentives and how we could be able to rationalize them so that we can be able to increase the revenue intake. We also will work with you as well as with other stakeholders help in decentralizing revenue collection. We know that the last legislature passed the Local Government Act and as a part of that act, 
you know, we need to decentralize some of these revenue functions. Such things as real estate property tax collection, as well as other tax and, and fees, would need to be devolved to the municipalities for greater efficiency as well as for revenue sharing. Another area that we intend to focus on is revising our consumer tax system. Currently, as you all know, the current legislature, there's a bill before the legislature for the value added tax law. The pilot that LRA has conducted with that shows that there's multiple increase potential in domestic revenue mobilization. You know, if we were able to get this one piece and get the full cooperation of all stakeholders in the process. So we will be working with you in the Ministry of Finance as well as through the President's office to make sure that this bill can be passed into law. You know, then they will give us the empowerment to be able to generate more revenue. And I agree with the Minister that we need to deploy innovative solutions and we need to implement technologies to enhance efficiency and effectiveness of our operation. Now I'd like to lay more emphasis on the efficiency and effectiveness part because there are you know, uh, reports that in our revenue generation mechanisms there may be some need for improvement. There may be revenue losses, waste and abuse that we think that by in deploying technology we can help to minimize some of those you know, uh, uh, waste and abuse. In terms of governance, for a revenue authority to succeed, it must operate within a transparent and accountable governance system. My commitment is to foster strong relationships with various stakeholders, including the Ministry of Finance, the legislature, the judiciary, the business com community, civil society, and other actors, through an open dialogue and collaboration. I believe we can ensure that our policies and practices are not only effective, but also fair and transparent for the benefit of all of our systems. I come to you with nearly three decades of senior managerial experience in both the public and private sector. My records are very clear. Um, it includes work in the private sector, we oversaw the governance of Ecobank Liberia at a time when it was at a stage of almost collapsing. We managed to turn it around. And for the many decades that Ecobank has been in Liberia, it had never generated any return for its shareholders. But under our leadership, we were able to turn Ecobank around from loss making to profit making. We also spent four years at the Public Procurement and Concessions Commission. And in that role, I had the privilege of working with many of you who are still in this legislature, because many of you were in this legislature at the time. And we all worked to strengthen public procurement. We developed systems, deployed technologies that give greater transparency and accountability you know, we also have worked in other areas, in academia. Currently, we had the Carter Center where we are implementing, you know, development-related projects related to peace and security as well as enhancing our democracy. In conclusion, my vision for the Revenue Authority is one where institutional strength, revenue expansion, and robust governance come together to create an organization that is not only efficient and effective, but also trusted and respected by the people it serves. With your support, I am confident that we can achieve these goals and contribute significantly to our nation's prosperity.